Shut up, you bastard. This podcast is supported by Cell Swords Entertainment and the Mad Tea Party. Enjoy the show. Saturday, May 25th, Tales from the Video Store goes live on the spot at the spot. That's right, Tales takes the podcast to the spot new. Lee, Doug, and Garrett will choose one film from the thousand used DVDs on the racks at the spot. They'll watch it and record episode number 34 right there on the spot at the spot. Looking for that hard-to-find movie that hasn't been reissued? I bet the spot has it, and the boys are gonna find it. Live May 25th, episode 34 goes down on the spot at the spot. Information at videostoretales.com or the Facebook page. fucking James Bond movie. He was like, no. Yes. <laughs> you said land. And I fucking love Danny Boyle. Yeah. That looks terrible. That looks terrible. We just watched the trailer of yesterday. Uh, so I guess some kid uh, hits his head and wakes up in a reality that does not have the Beatles. I guess that's... yeah. With the exception of Lily James, will be something. Yeah, directed by yeah Danny Boyle. Yeah, 127 hours. The more times you say that, train spotting, the worse it feels to say. Because I love Danny Boyle. I do. Directed by Danny Boyle. Yeah. Infidel, do you know who I am? Queen of the Kung Fu Fairies. Like, have you ever seen his first movie? Uh, Was it Train Spotting? No, one before Train Spotting. The Acid Uh, House. Nah, the one where they. Find the dead body. That's their roommate. What is that fucking movie called? Oh, I know what you're saying. I Room, know what you're talking uh, about. Roommate? Yeah. I, I know what it's you're talking so about. It's so good. Like it's like I like all of his movies. Well, uh, some more than others, yeah. of course. But right. That Damn. shit was fucking just atrocious. Do you like Sunshine? I like it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Oh, I loved 127 Hours. 28 Days Later, great. Oh, Shallow yeah. Grave. Shallow Grave, that's what yeah. it's called. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't a big fan of Slumdog. It's, it's, it's a it, little overrated. It's, but it's a cool movie. It's though. a cool movie, and it's incredibly emotionally manipulative. Like, when he meets the kid that got his eyes burned out by the acid again, and the kid's like, oh, I'm glad you made it. I was just like, fuck this movie. Yeah. 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 Trying to make me cry. Exactly. It was like, get, killing me. Just like, come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. But yeah, this that shit is terrible. Well, I hope the movies we watched this week are uh, are a little bit better. Well, than that that. kind of puts a, a button on the three episodes we did. Like, we just did three episodes on very funny but very dark British comedies. It's like, that, that, movie's, gonna like, make, that movie's gonna make a zillion dollars. And just, yeah. No, terrible. Nobody, yeah, exactly. I will never watch that. No, no I couldn't. No, it, the, it, phys- it almost calls me physical pain to watch the trailer. I feel nauseous. Yeah, like, I, wa- I wonder if it'll get an A. I wonder if the critics will. I mean, because Danny Boyle usually does a good job oh, in yeah. movies. I'm sure he'll direct and it'll look great and what have you, but I, I don't give a fuck about that. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. I don't either. I give a fuck about ninjas. <laughs> Ninja! I give a fuck about Kung Fu Ready to die. and Hong Kong, because that's kill. where we are. Yeah. Fuck the Beatles. We are not in England anymore, yeah. right? That's correct. Right. That's correct, sir. You yeah. bastard. Yep. All right. Well, then, uh, we'll How was you... everyone's week? Well, <laughs> mine was fun, you ugly stinking skunk fucker. 
Well, How about yours? Uh, my, you look like uh, the queen of kung fu fairies with those goddamn tennis shoes on, by the way. <laughs> I'll have you know. <laughs> What's wrong with looking at dirty books? <laughs> It'll get you in cold water, apparently. <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, we won't get into the movie yet, but we can you believe it? It's the, I think it's the first time, with the exception of Mandy, that we watched a movie that Lee had not seen. Yeah, I think so. Yep. I think so. Yeah. It's the first. This is only the second podcast out of 34. Yes. Believe Finally. It, believe it or not. All right, well, let's get into it, man. Okay. What did you get? Did you have, you got any good movies that uh, you watched? Yes. That I, I need to put on my list. Yes. Ever growing list. Uh, I watched uh, last night. I watched Destroyer with Nicole Kidman, uh, which I, I liked. I really liked. I didn't I've love never it. heard of the film. Uh, <laughs> it was directed by Karen Kusama, who it's basically it's the movie she should have made after Girl Fight. Like this, is, if you subtract the Eon Flux movie, this is the movie she should have made right after that. Who, Nicole Kidman? No, uh, Charlie's Ka- there. No, Ka- oh, oh, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Stand the director. Outside. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go um, flog yourself. Yeah, yeah, I'm exactly. sorry. But yeah, like it's just, it's, I mean, it's good. It's really well done. Yeah. And it, but it's like, will I ever watch it again? I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. But it, like I said, I, I rented it from Family Video. Glad I saw it. And uh, Nicole Kidman's really good in it. And every, everybody's like, it's got a really good cast, and, you know. But, uh. Enjoyed that, and uh, I watched a Korean martial arts movie called Revenger, which is on Netflix. It's a Netflix distributed film. And uh, do you remember No Escape, the action movie from the early nineties with Ray Liotta? Yes. It's like it's No Escape, but with Kung Fu. It's a, it, it's is that a, the one where they're on that prison. island? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like uh, if you want just something that's ninety minutes and just entertaining as hell. Good action. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good. Guy gets head butted to death in the movie, <laughs> and. Uh, Gratuitous amounts of people getting shot in the throat with arrows, you know, because they don't have guns, so they just have sort of rudimentary homemade weapons. And uh, yeah, really enjoyed that. Revenger. Revenger. Yes. And I watched a movie. I re- uh, a few months ago, I, I referenced a movie I, uh, I I talked where I watched called uh, In Order of Disappearance, the Norwegian movie. Well, I watched the American remake with Liam Neeson called uh, In Cold Pursuit. And it's every, it's almost shot for shot the same movie. Really? But it does not work at all. It's no good? It's just, it's just, it's, it's like a, you know when you, like, you make a Xerox of a Xerox and it kind of looks faded, like you can't, yeah. it's like that. It's like, it's, the, it's every part of it is the same, with the exception that uh, the uh, opposing crime family is not Serbians, they're Native American. Because it takes place in Denver, whereas the other right. took place in Norway. And, uh, it's, oh, it's the same movie. I mean, I just saw the trailer for right. it a couple of days ago, and I was like, "I never to rent that." I nothing did. Like, if, uh, if I hadn't written it down that I watched, I would not remember that I watched it. That bad? No, it's not bad. It's just nothing. It's, it's like just, one, you know, it's just pointless. Yeah, exactly. There's no relevance. Neutral. At all. Yeah, it's neutral. It's like not terrible. They just basically remade it. Yeah. not for better or for but worse. But it, it does it's like just... the, the first one is so, the original is so funny, and they even do the the name card thing. Like somebody dies, yeah. like, their name but pops up. But it just up. didn't work. It just didn't work. You know, and even had my favorite joke in the movie where the guy paraglides into the snowblower and you see the blood and yeah. parachute come out. But it's not, it wasn't funny this time. Hmm. And it's, I don't know, you know. It's weird because, like I said, it's the same but different. But different. Yeah. And whatever those differences are. Well, I think it's just the, that sort of Scandinavian sense of humor yeah. where just everything's pointless, you know. Damn. But yeah, I did not like it. Like, I, I just. I'm yeah. not going to rent it then. Yeah. That is, and uh, that's all I watched. Right? Okay. I watched uh, ninja movies because right. that's where we are. Right. Finally. And that's what I should have done. I, well, I actually, go ahead. I just needed it, man. You know, I, I needed some. I, I feel you, man. I, I needed some. I feel that way all the time, though. I wanted to watch some <laughs> of the, uh, they're called the Venom Mob. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, right? it's these, I, I don't know the exact number of these participants i don't it's like seven to yeah. ten yeah something like that of these these actors that um <clears throat> basically got together and they made like 25 movies together right and all you know never playing really the same characters but it's the same actors in all these movies and they're they were in the two movies that i watched and they're in the movie i, I believe they're also in are they in ninja and the dragons maybe one or two of them uh, there could be a couple of them in there yeah. I, i'm not 100 percent sure 
Um, but the first movie I watched is uh, 1981 uh, Shaw Brothers Five Element Ninjas. Mm-hmm. Or Chinese Super Ninja, as it was called when I was a kid. Which is fine, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, uh, a uh, samurai from Japan shows up uh, to fight these, uh, these students at a, a Chinese martial arts school. And he loses and kills himself. But before he, he goes out, he's like, this ninja are going to come. They're going to kill all of you. They're going to take this school down. And he throws this ring thing at the, at the master and kind of poisons him to where he can't, he can't participate in the fights anymore. Um, and they have to fight the element ninjas, which the elements in this are gold, wood, water, fire, and earth, mm-hmm. right? Um, and the way that the ninjas are portrayed in this, the way that they come out of the ground or come out of the water, and they have these scenes where these guys from the school come looking for them, and the ninjas just kick their asses. Question. Yes. When the guy gets it through the leg with the spear, is that, is that his intestines? Or is that his balls he's stepping on? Or is it his intestines? I've never been able to figure that out. Watching it, I was like, that's his ball sack. That's his ball sack that's been ripped open. Is That's okay, what I he's thought. stepping on. Okay. That he's stuck. Because I've kind of, I was like, well, then sometimes I'm like, well, that's probably his guts. But then I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, it, it's a ninja-centric um, a, a, as any movie I've ever seen. Came out in 1981, I think. Um, the these element ninjas they they kill basically everybody at this school, even the master, but they leave one guy alive, and that's what you don't do. Yeah, yeah. So um, this guy meets up with some other. He finds a ninja master. And this guy has a couple of pupils, and he trains this kid, and then they're out for revenge. And it was awesome. It looked great. I enjoyed every fucking second of it. I really did. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I fucking loved it. I mean, I was just sitting there like, oh my god, yes, yes. Yeah. You know, the the sound, the look, all of it is exactly what I, I just needed, like... It's been a long time, I guess, since I had really sat down and, and watched some of these movies, and I watched a couple of them. Um, the, the old kung fu uh, movies like that from those from those production companies are kind of like porn these days, uh, the way they do them, uh, meaning they already had planned. Basically, they have a budget. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so, uh, here, here's $7 million. You're going to make 13 movies. We're going to package them. We're going to sell them. And right. uh, whatever money you have left is, yeah. you know, is yours. Right. Oh, absolutely. So these, these groups, same guys, yeah. same director, same everything would go out and make, yeah. you know what I mean? Create well, the, stories and make all oh, yeah. just pump these things out like an assembly line. Well, all the Venom movies, they were directed by Chan Che, who directed, I think, over 100 movies. Yes. Although some of them kind of co-directed. So maybe let's say 95. It's a bunch. It's a bunch. And he was just, yeah, he, it was, you know, like I said, like we were talking, we were talking about Albert Pune a couple months ago. It was quant- sometimes it was quantity over quality, but when he was like dialed in, which he was, he was in that, I, he thought, was, I felt like yeah, that, was. that was a, some of the Venom movies are not as good as the others. That, that was that an awesome, really good. Yeah, yeah that's, like, that's my one of my two favorites. The ninja uh, leader, yeah, at the end is just a fucking badass dude, and how they, yeah, how they have to deal with them is cool. Yeah, um, the other movie I watched, it it just so happened to coincide with something that Lee had talked about, but. I found it and I was like, "Let's give this a shot." Mm-hmm. So I watched Crippled Avengers. Crippled Avengers is my shit. <laughs> Another Chang Shea. Yep. Now, where did you find that? On Prime, baby. Is it on Prime? You just got to dig, baby. Oh, I know. Well, I'm telling you, they, I just put in Ninja and I had like 1,200 fucking movies to pick from. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted okay. to find something that had these same Venom mob guys in it, directed by by uh, Chang Shea, and this one. Was just amazing. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it's yeah. my favorite. That's a, that's a great movie. It's just, yeah, it's brilliant. You know, you've got all these, all these guys, and and the, I, I guess the the evil lord or whatever. He has this dude with the metal hands. Yeah, and this guy handicaps all of these all these warriors. He he blinds one. 
the way he he makes uh, the guy deaf and dumb was yeah awesome. They cut a dude's legs off at the knees. Um, another guy they they basically crush his skull to kind of make him simple, and he's great yeah. too. You know yeah. Um, and then one of those guys had I think it was the the simpleton yeah. Uh, his master they they find him. And they're, you know, they're ragtag, all busted up, like, you know, trying to stay together, kind of take care of each other. And this guy decides that he'll teach them, you know, what they need to know to be able to get revenge. Um, And and it's just fucking perfect. Yeah. Like, the scene, my favorite scene, the blind dude, and it's towards the end, and he's coming in, he's, he's as skilled as any of them. And to... Combat the fact that he his he has such an auditory sharpness is to bang these gongs. You know, they've got twenty guys banging gongs and other guys trying to attack them to kind of throw them off balance, and it just works, man. It's just it's awesome. Yeah, I'm not going to give away what happens in the end, but like most of these movies, it ends in a cool way. Yeah, oh yeah, and you're happy at the end. You know, it, it's like and it's real quick. It's yeah. like something happens and then it's like credits, and I was like. Okay, we're done. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's what I watched. Two fucking awesome, awesome ninja kung fu movies. Um, same director, Chang Shea, Crippled Avengers, and uh, Five Element Ninjas. Yeah. Sweet. Good stuff. I, I can't remember if I've seen the Five Element Ninjas. I've seen the Crippled Avengers. Mm-hmm. I I had planned on watching Kung Fu too, man. Like I really did. Like I wanted to stick with it. Um, I, but what happened was I had a kind of a off weekend. It wasn't as busy, uh, so I did a lot of like web work on the sofa. And I was wa- I was trying to utilize my subscription to Hulu while mm-hmm. I had it. Um, so uh, you know, you you suggested a movie, and then I found a movie that I had been that had been put on my back burner. Margaret Robbie, I, Tanya, that I really wanted to see. Oh, you hadn't seen that no, yet? No, I have not seen that. I have now. That's uh, awesome, dude. Yeah, so, but anyway, I'll, let me let me apologize to the fan, uh, to our fans. I really did have plans on watching ninja movies. However, I th- watched three non-ninja movies, and they were all good. So, I felt like you come in and doing those and the ninja movies, it would be counterproductive. So, I'm just going to do the normal movies. You covered the ninja movies. Yes, I, Tanya, Alice and Janie won the Oscar. Absolutely justified. Deserved it. It was the best performance I have seen in a long time. And it's, it's that movie is not all that good. But, the, but, but hold on. Margot Robbie and her, just alone, make it. It, it makes it so entertaining. Yeah. That, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just one of those movies. It's I like, didn't care about the whole yeah, movie nobody right. structure. I knew the story. Knew and the fighting, just, just the, everything that they did. Like, it was great the way they did it. It, it was, I mean, I'll give the credit where credit's due. The movie was pretty good. But had you not had them. No, no, it had been garbage. It, it not was, garbage, but it just come out like it's very Scorsese inspired. The film. Oh, absolutely. And it would have just come off. As just a cheap Scorsese knockoff. They had to have when they broke the wall a couple of times. Like yeah, those were the yeah. cool things. Yeah. Actresses that, or actresses that could carry it. And yeah. you really do like. It's funny. Uh, I remember all that stuff. You really do like if that's the, and that is the truth. Apparently, that's as accurate as it was. Well, uh, you you almost feel sorry for her, like because you can completely. see that because she really wasn't the she wasn't she didn't look like Nancy Kerrigan. She didn't. No. There was nothing about her. Nope. Or her life. And that was the problem. Was she was probably the best skater, but because she was quote unquote white trash, they didn't want her around. And that man, that sucks. Well, I mean, it's... You know? but it was that was a funny move. There was a couple times I spit my water out. Uh, yeah. When that when she looks at that uh, teacher, and she's like, uh, she said, "You can't talk to the, you can't scream at the kids. Don't scream at the kids." And she like. She just physically had just screamed at the kids. Looks over and goes, I didn't scream at the kids, you cunt. I mean, you just, like, she yeah. was just awful. Right. A miserable human being. But the movie was pretty good. You should check it out, especially if you grew up in the 80s like us and remember all that craziness. Oh, yeah. Uh, another one I saw uh, was your suggestion. Thank you. No problem. Uh, I put up a little article on the website. We I watched a movie. 
uh, on Hulu. Uh, Lee sent it to me, and it was baseball. And I'm like, he's like, you should check this out. And I'm like, first, first thing I see the poster, I'm like, oh, no, it's my movie. Like, oh, God, it's some, like, low-budget movie that's like mine or something like that. Uh, it wasn't. However, it was a, it's, you don't see these movies anymore. Like, um, back in the day, early Miramax, they would yeah. make beautiful girls. Oh, yeah. Nobody's full like Paul Newman. Oh, yeah. These Love little simple stories about one person in some small town. There's really not, it's just all drama-based, yeah. dialogue-based. Uh, and you haven't seen those in a long time. Yeah. People aren't spending money and aren't yeah. making these movies. Well, until now, the right. All Square was fantastic. It's about a uh, it's about a down on his luck uh, bookie who uh, can't get anybody to collect or can't get anybody to pay. So he starts uh, taking bets on the uh, the little league games. Mm-hmm. There's really no action. It's all scene driven. Mm-hmm. It's small town in uh, up up north, up in Mass. Right. And it's so good. Yeah. It and really it re- it really restored yeah. my faith in that those kind of movies yeah. are going to get made. Right. People are still making those movies. You get Josh, like Michael Kelly's a great character actor. Right. But they got Josh Lucas in that side role just so they could get that movie. Oh, made. I'm sure. I'm sure. But it but it worked. Yeah. I mean it worked. It, it, I mean you, John Hyman's is his first he was first director. Mm-hmm. Timothy Brady, first time writer. Probably wrote the script and somehow managed to lock Josh Lucas in, and everything fell. Yeah, you know what I mean. And yeah. it, it is a great movie. It's so simple. And, and the and the characters are there's no like they're allowed to be terrible people. Yes, like there's no like you know at the end of the movie like when the kid asks him, "You still gonna be a book?" He's like, "I mean, maybe when football season starts, yeah." I mean, he's like, there's no like you know, there's nothing fake about it. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, you it know. seems real. It's like right. you're watching them. And also, it's like the uh, the poster that I sent you is obviously inspired by the Bad News Bears. Yes. And uh, the other day, I just happened to be scrolling through Prime, and I saw the remake with Bob Thornton. I said, well, I just watched All Square, which is obviously has is similar to the 70s Bad News Bears, where Walter Mather is kind of a terrible person. Lets the kids drink beer, lets them just pretty much do whatever. I said, well, I, said I watched the remake in like 2005. I'm going to just... I got like 10 minutes into it. I was like, this is just not good. And it was just like, it's weird that, you know, this movie, which is not a re... It's like All Square is almost a better Bad News Bears movie than the remake is. Even though the relationship is only between him and the kid, the one kid. But it's a really sweet relationship, you know. And uh, it's like, like I said, nothing, there's nothing, it's not sentimental. It's not, I enjoyed the hell out of it. That's why I didn't mention it in mine because I knew you were going to talk about it. But yeah, it's, yeah, I can't recommend it enough. You really should if you if you still have your Hulu, you yeah. should get on it tonight and watch it because it's real small. It's just so simple, and it's like it's those movies. I I spent my whole, uh, you know, when I left Hickory and went to Los Angeles, like my first three or four scripts were all based on my little small town, you know, and that was back when they would make those movies because right. they were cheap to make and people were pumping out movies and then the recession happens and yeah. everything starts to go to green screen and it has to be big and it has to be Transformers or it has to be remakes and they stopped making them. Right. And then I watched this. I knew like 15 minutes into that movie yeah. that it was going to be something special. For me, anyway. And I hope, I, I'm not seeing the film on DVD like I said. We've just, we, we both watched it on streaming. There's two posters. There's one is this like 70s illustrated poster. And the one that's probably on the DVD is this monstrosity. Yeah. And who, I would I would never watch that movie. In a that looks like the Walmart package. It does. Uh, it does. Yeah, like, yeah. it's like two giant Photoshop heads above a baseball diamond. Yeah. It's like, and then, yeah. it's like, you know, a Star Wars poster isn't a Star Wars poster unless it's drawn, unless it's the painted. By Drew Strews. The, yeah. but the, but the montage. Yeah. If oh, you yeah. did something where it was just like Star Wars and some space, it yeah. wouldn't be the same. Yeah, exactly. That, that all square show, the show dug that one. Yeah. Up. See that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it. You see what it's like? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're yeah. on that feed. Yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, it is good, and you should check it out. Michael Kelly and Josh Lucas. Very uh, first time writer, uh, Timothy Brady. Uh, I want to hunt you down, man. And uh, pick your brain, you and John Hyman's. If you're listening to this podcast, I want to find you guys. You guys tell me how you made that movie because yeah. the, that's a great movie. It was fantastic, and and it, like I said, it doesn't really get made normally these days. And I'm glad it got made. The uh, the first scene where you meet Josh, Josh Lucas's character, Michael Kelly's sitting there. He's like, "Hey, man!" He's like, "He's the commissioner of the baseball league." 
He's like, uh, what you doing here? He's like, I just watch this game. Yeah, I know that kid. He's like, oh, I'm running for city council. Uh, you should vote for me. I don't vote. You should really vote, man. My guy goes, okay. You just convinced me. And just the way he says it yeah. is so like, he's not even paying attention to him. He's yeah. just like, dude, just go away. He's so good in the movie. Like, okay, he really, that guy should be a bigger actor. It really, he yeah. really, he really is good. He plays it real deadpan. Just it, and like I said, it's I felt like Sling Blade. Yeah, you see her just watching yeah. this dude kind of trudge through his life, and the scenes are all real simple. You know what I mean? There's no like fight. You know what I mean? There's yeah. no big nope. town hall fight at all. No, it's no, just uh-huh. it's just drama based, beat based, perfectly paced, and yeah. I loved it. And I love I, I loved it. I almost I almost bought it, but yeah. I'm gonna wait. Um. And then finally, so yes, so All Square, it's on Hulu. You mu- it's a must-see for anybody that digs movies. Uh, and then I watched uh, one of the most incredible hour and a half that I had s- very seen in documentary in a long time. I watched the uh, Oscar winner uh, documentary Free Solo. It was absolutely amazing. It, it just looks so hard to watch. It, it's crazy. I mean, he scaled Capitan. Yes. And, he, and it was crazy because he got to the first point a year earlier and was like, dude, I'm bailing, I'm not doing it. And then he went back. And it's just the way they way they get into his life and what he's done and and then they they they, they use a section and talk about how many people have died. Like how, it's crazy because they're like, you know, people don't understand. We're gonna be filming him and he could just very well at fall. any given point fall out of frame and die right in front of me. Like this is what they do. Said that they could be the best guy ever. And uh you know, it all it takes is a slip, and he's dead. Like it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, and the way the his theory, the way he theorizes it, and everything, it's just it's just good. And it's it it was so well shot, and the, they the, and then they spent a lot of money. Marco uh, Bellatami soundtrack. They got right. a real cinematic soundtrack, and these freaking shots, man, when he's going up, and dude, it, you you got to see it because yeah. this guy is, and, and it's like he's like. Everybody's going to die. You're going to die. You could die yeah. tomorrow. He says, doing a free solo, it's just more intimate. It's just right there. And it's, it could happen in any second. And he knew it. You know what I mean? Yeah. He just, it's crazy, dude. Yeah, I saw, I saw, I want to say it was an ESPN 30 for 30 about this guy and the making of this movie a couple of months ago. So I, I know the guy that you're talking yeah. about. And yeah, talking uh, about Alex Honnold. Yeah. And, it, it, and he's a cool dude. Like, it he's seems just, down just down crazy, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. because you you see this this monster. It's not even a a wall. It's a mountain. I wouldn't even. I, I get t- I get scared to get up on my roof and spray yeah. the leaves out of the freaking uh, yes. gutters. And this yeah. dude did El Capitan without any ropes. Like if you, those the high it's wire. It's crazy. The, like, uh, was it the Walendas, the high wire people? Yeah. But I was wondering even whether the guy he did that long walk was whatever it was like last year and then how about his dad fall his dad fell to his death yeah. he was like that's what I do yeah. he's like I'm not going to do anything else the, one of the he's one like, of the if it goes down it goes down that's how it's going to be yeah. yeah one of the most interesting parts is he had this really ratty notebook and he was writing in it you don't really know what he's writing until the end until, until the very end before he goes and he's like uh, left 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 hand up Move to the right three steps. He was actually jotting down his route. Right. Then he's then he's memorizing it. Sweet, yeah. Left arm, left arm over a right arm. Like he knew exactly where he was wow, putting his hands. That's crazy. He knew exactly how he was going to go up that thing. Yeah. And did. It. And he did it. Yeah. And he did it in three hours. And it's crazy, wow. dude. I hate to spoil the movie, but it, it what's amazing. And since I've spoiled the movie, and you everybody knows because he's right. doing. Yeah. Uh, you know he makes it. He, he went to the first. He went to the first. Yeah. It'd be Grizzly Man. Yeah. Right? yeah exactly. He went to the. There was different um, spots all the way up that were big, big spots. And, and you know, if he got past this spot, you know, he would yeah. have. So basically, the first spot a year before, he just didn't feel good about it, and he was just. So there was a lot of buildup for a year. And he's like, I have to do it. Like, I have to do it. Yeah. And everybody's like, you don't have to do it. He's like, I have to do it. And it's crazy because it shows him and he's memorizing and memorizing. And then they're like, give it 48 hours and then and then make your decision. He's the only person to ever free climb. Them. Right. That's and they're right. like, and so I mean, Jimmy, he's sitting there with the documentarian. Um, and they're like, and he's still like, I don't know, you know. And everybody's like, look, you don't have to do this. Yeah, it's fine. You're, you're, you're making, North Face is paying you anyway. You don't have to do this. 
this documentary, I mean, we've still got a documentary. You don't have to do it. Why don't you wait 48 hours and decide? And then they show him, and he calls the, the filmmakers the next morning at 5 a.m. He says, we're going to do this right now. And he went up. I'm ready. <laughs> Straight up, this, boom, he went up. <laughs> I was like, wow. Like, he just, and he's like, I just woke up, and I knew it was that, it was that day, it was that time, and I did it. It was just, dude, it's just amazing. Like, yeah. it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy, but it's not reckless because he, he was, he knew in his head exactly where he was going and how he was going to get up. Yeah. And it was fantastic. And then it, that was really cool. They had a couple of interviews where the cameramen that were like all climbers, everybody was, sure. you know, but they're like, what if he comes by me? And he's like, what if a drone comes down and hits him? Like, what if my, what if we have, what if I have a cable and he comes over here and he gets caught on it and dies? He's like, dude, I, this is crazy shit. And so, yeah. and then, so they build this up, man. And then it's, it's great. You got to see it. Free yeah. solo. It won the Oscar. It won the Oscar. And they don't normally give those kind of movies uh, the Oscar for documentary. It usually has to do with current affairs. Or something just incredibly sad. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, worst, yeah, the worst Holocaust thing ever. or something yeah. like that. This yeah. was, it, it, it was a refresh. It was refreshing. And, yeah. it, you know, at the end of it, you, you may not want to go climb El Capitan, but you're like, dude. Oh, I can do something. Yeah, I cool. can't climb a fucking ladder. Much less <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can still wear two pairs of socks. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Right. I, I do want to see it. Yeah. yeah, it's very good. Excuse my fist. I can't control it. It thinks you belong with the rest of the dirt on the floor. You shall die. All right, so back to ninjas. All right, tonight's movie. Da, da, da. Ninja in the Dragon's Den. Ready to fight. From yes. 1982. Ready to die. Uh, directed by Corey Yoon, his first movie as a director. Yeah. Uh, starring Conan Lee, starring Horiyuki Sanada, and the Korean super kicker himself, Wang Jing Lee, as the surprise villain at the end. Yes. And uh, it is... Because I was watching, I'm like, where is he? Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, that's exactly what I thought, because the, the, the synopsis of the movie makes it seem like he's going to be a much bigger part. Right. But anyway, <laughs> so, you know... Uh, Hong Kong action movie from 1982 and uh, what did you think though? I was so happy watching it. Right. I, I just it look it's got some really overtly silly right. moments. I, right. I mean more so than your average yeah you yeah. know Hong Kong Kung Fu movie. Right. You'd agree to that. I, I mean it's it's silly in right. some parts. Yeah. But when it gets down to the action mm-hmm. it is second to Fucking none. yeah! Like the the first scene that kind of takes your breath away is a technically flawless stilts battle yeah. where they're basically doing these crazy moves on stilts, like six foot stilts. Yeah, we're not talking two foot. I mean, no. they're they're in the air, right? Um, it, it it's just perfect. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was as entertaining all the way to the end of a movie that I have seen in so long. Yeah. Like, I, you watch movies and yeah, they're funny, or you watch movies and yeah, it's got good action, but this had all of it. Right. And I, I think I had a smile on my face the whole time. Yeah. I mean, I really did. From the opening music yeah. to the end, I just was as happy as I could fucking be. I completely agree. It, uh, like you said, the, the humor in it is very broad. Yeah. That is sort of like, this was, and, it, and by, this is 82, so this was starting to die out around that time. That sort of peaking opera based, yeah. very broad Cantonese comedy. Like you go back like five years before this, or four years before this, the original Drunken Master with Jackie Chan. There's literally a character who has drawn on freckles. Yes. You know, and it's just that sort of, just that sort of like very ethnic broad Cantonese comedy. Right. You know. And like I said, it's uh, the character in the in the version we watched, which is the dub version. That character's name is Charlie, mm-hmm. and he's in the movie. He's not too much in the movie though, because once the movie starts proper, he kind of goes to the background. Right. The first act, Charlie's very prominent. Prominent. Yeah. And very goofy character. Some people he will probably be a deal breaker because like, he's just like, you know, they're like, oh, I don't think this guy's funny at all. And he and to me, he's not funny because I'm no. not Chinese. No, it, you he, know. he and, was the worst part of the movie. Right, he is the worst part of the movie. But everything else is 
It's 10 so, out of 10. It's so spot Conan on. Conan Lee, he was never a huge star, but he was in a, several really good movies. Sort of known as like a muscly, um, muscular guy back yeah. in the uh, 80s. Actually, he looked like Jackie Chan, kind of. He well, really does. the hair is very Jackie Chan. Very you can Jackie tell Chan. they feathered, they gave him the 70 feathers hair. Yeah. Like, that was what they were going for. <laughs> and uh, Horiaku Sanada, uh, when he was 11 years old, started being trained by Sonny Shiba in Japan. You know, like, actor, martial artist, historical expert, pop star. You know, just, All of it. just yeah, he's like he's yeah. like he's the guy Jeremy Renner kills in the sword fight at the beginning of uh, Avengers Endgame, mm-hmm. and uh, or oh yeah, yeah. yep, he's in it. Like he was in Lost, he was in uh, yes, yep, he was the uh, head other, I guess uh, one of the others. one of the others, yeah, who yeah. was one of the top ones, I guess. Yeah, yeah. this guy, he's in everything. Yeah, you know, and uh, he's awesome. I believe he was in uh, Westworld season two as mm-hmm. one of the Samurais. He was also the uh, historical advisor. Right. And, uh, yeah, like, he's... How he didn't end up being, like, the biggest star in the world, I have no idea. Because literally, like, there are, pe- there are people who are superstars who have, do not... Can't have, touch him. Yeah, can't touch him. As, just as far as action goes. Yeah. Like, in this, he does, like, flips and stuff that are just ridiculous. And uh, he gets set on fire and then jumps into what I imagine is a pool of kerosene. Yes. Because the whole thing just explodes. They're like, ha, 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 I didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and uh, the, the plot to go very simple. He's a ninja. Comes to Japan. He has killed every. There's a. He, he believes that there was a sort of a conspiracy to murder his father. And he has killed everyone who he believes was involved with this, except one guy who was a Japanese man who moved to Japan. And that is. And he travels to Japan with his wife. And that uh, older Japanese gentleman is now Conan Lee's character's godfather, essentially. Right. Unofficial father figure. And master. And master. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so and. So basically, it's a ninja versus a Chinese kung fu master, and this whole second act is a fight. Yes, there's like two dialogue scenes, but the entire second act is basically one fight. They're going, they're running, they're chasing each other, they're setting each other on fire, throwing each other through windows. There's sword fights, you know. The ninja the, hotel. The ninja hotel. Oh, yes, dude, exactly. It's so good. The ninja. <laughs> the ninjas come to the awesome. boat. Yeah. They just fall through the ceiling of the boat. Oh, oh. And, the st- and, the, and that last scene I was telling Doug before the cast started. When he gets up on the stilts and he starts go- coming towards uh, the the bad guy and yeah. the other guys and comes up, you just see his head as yeah. he's moving through the dirt. You're just yeah. like, this is the coolest yeah. thing. The ever. ninja bugs bunnies it through the dirt. Yeah, like for it's, no you, reason, just to show that he can. Just, exactly, it's never yeah. it's never shown that he can do this <laughs> previous to the movie. You just you know I, when I was watching, I was like, oh, he's bugs bunny in it, yeah. which is the only thing I know to refer to that as, where you like travel <laughs> six inches under the dirt and then jump up. And it's just oh god! But it's so good. It's so good. it's so now, entertaining. Now Doug didn't hear, Doug didn't hear it. Yeah. But did you hear the Raiders of the Lost Ark uh, no, soundtrack? I did not. But that does not surprise me because I don't think there were such things as copyright laws. And yeah, it's just in a couple of the yeah. uh, climax. I don't know how I missed it though. It's from the it's from the the desert chase. When he's on yeah. the back of the... Yeah. 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 It's, well, it's funny. Well, the... Uh, I, I, could, I was like, hey, that's John Williams. It's Raiders. Uh, the revenge music from Kill Bill, that, that's from uh, Ironside. That's Quincy Jones music. Yeah, right. That when Warner Brothers bought it, they had to pay Quincy Jones for the right to use it because they were using it in Hong Kong for a year before the movie. Yeah. Right here. So, well, that that, like you, if you... Uh, this is... Uh, I don't know where Amazon gets some of these movies. Because, not that you can get this movie on DVD, but I'm pretty sure it probably doesn't have this voice track. Or this music. I don't know, man. I I looked up this a little bit. Yeah. And for reviews. Right. And I saw some, you know, modern 2016, 2017 reviews, and people were like, I own 300 kung fu movies, and this is probably my favorite. Right. You know, so I don't know the quality yeah, uh, well, they, they, yeah, I mean, like uh, a lot of older audio tracks, right? Like there are some old, like I've, I remember buying old bootleg VHS DVDs in the early like nineties, early two thousands, and like it would have music from Rocky. In it. Like they literally just would take. Yeah. And now, if that movie got re- put out now, it probably wouldn't have that music. Yeah, I don't know. And uh, because like know. Amazon has some question. I mean, I don't know where they get them. I don't know like some that. movies, they're like, where did they, where did you get n- n- Ninja Laser Mission from? And it just like it's the worst quality ever. Yeah, you know, it's like some of them would just look like VHS rips. I don't 
don't Actually, know. there was a zombie movie from Japan called uh, Shot of the Dead. And it's actually being remade in America. And the, it was on streaming on Prime. You could watch it if you had a Prime. It was a bootleg. Someone had uploaded an illegal copy, and it was on Prime. Really? And the director had, had to call Amazon from Japan. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, oh, listen, he's like, this hasn't come out on DVD in America yet. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I mean, hmm. they probably just buy movies in bulk. Put them up there, really? it, like I said, there's well that dub, that dub it's, it was a character in its own. Yes. I mean, some of the stuff is just yeah. hilarious. That's what I'm saying. Like I don't know if that would be like if it was put out on Blu-ray now, it would probably have a different audience. Oh, absolutely, because there was, it's like you you gay or oh, yeah. there's a lot there's a lot, there's a lot of gay humor in it. Gay humor. Oh yeah, yeah. And just put it that way. Well, it's eighty eighty two. That was yeah. hilarious. Thing. That's how they did it. Yeah, but it's it's ninety five minutes. Perfect length. Perfect length. Everything. Some of the best awesome. fight choreography you'll ever see. Uh, a, a guy is defeated by the magic power of boobs. Uh, <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Yep. Exactly. It has, like I said, it has Con- Conan Lee, Horiyaki Sadata, and Wang Jing Lee. has a Chinese guy, Japanese guy, and a Korean guy. Yeah. And it's, you know, if you want to know what early 80s Hong Kong movies were like, this is what they want. And I noticed in in the two movies I watched before and this one. Yeah. Kind of that coming together of Chinese and Japanese. Right. In yeah. all three I, that I didn't I didn't know it was so prevalent. Well, here's why that happened. Back uh, in the early 80s. Yeah, in, uh, in late like 1979, Kung movies became hugely popular in Japan. Yeah. If you watch like say even something like Five Fingers of Death, which is from like 75, the villains are up. there's no sympathetic Japanese characters. Uh, before like the late seventies, early eighties, all Japanese characters in kung fu movies were either bad guys or they were they had the giant Tojo Coke bottle glasses. They were just sort of cartoon villains, right? Or they were just like vicious killers. Like this movie, like you know, the co lead is Japanese. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's a very sympathetic character. Like, he's, he's awesome. Yeah, he's all he's awesome. You love him. And, yeah, and he's because that's basically they were making so much money from Japan at that point that they kind of had to throw him a bone, yeah, so to speak. Exactly. Nice. And the opening song is is classic. Great song. Yeah, yeah. And we open the uh, the podcast with it, yeah. so it's it's the best ever. Right. Like I said, if you've never watched a lot of a kung fu movies, especially from this time period, the the humor it's you know it's a little much at the beginning. Get past that. Get past focus that. on the action, and yeah. you'll be pleased. Once the uh, ninja shows up in in China, it's all it's go time. It's go time. Yeah, yeah. it's a very it's, very fun uh, yeah. movie. Very fun movie. Absolutely. It is a rant, for it's sure. It's a rant, yes. And you can also get it on DVD, so it could be a buy. And how funny. how Lee or myself or Garrett didn't... Ha- yeah. Now, see, I've heard of it. I don't know I how I have gone and never seen this. Yeah. I mean, I, it's one well, that just kind of slipped through these slipped fingers, through the, I well, guess. Well, it was released by Seasonal Films, which was a much smaller company. Right. Shaw Brothers or Golden Harvest. Uh and they, uh, right after this, they switched, like they did the No Retreat, No Surrender movies. Yeah. They switched to doing American movies with a completely Hong Kong crew. That's where uh, Corey Yoon, that's how he came to America. Right. You know. And uh, they, they, so they became sort of like, I guess they just weren't interested in putting it out on, the, on like VHS back in the 80s. Because they were putting out movies with like Van Damme and stuff. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But it was killer. It really was. It was. It was awesome. Yes. It was awesome. Number one ninja, ninja movie, uh, kung fu movie from uh, the eighties down, and it was a hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I like the shot. You know, um, there was a shot when they're in the ninja hotel, uh-huh. which the ninja hotel is like a cockroach hotel. It's like this guy gets this ninja in the, into this kind of room and and he can't get out like the windows are barred and every time he thinks he's opening a door he can't get out uh there's a a shot where um the ninja blows out all the candles he's like running around the room trying to make it dark so he can have an advantage over this guy yeah and the guy the uh the chinese guy takes glitter Mm mm-hmm and glitter bombs the guy. Yeah. But it was an awesome shot, yeah. man. It looked... I was yeah. like, damn, that is fantastic. Uh, Corey and he was a stunt coordinator for right. us. Oh, it's... And he prevalent. was in... Uh, he he went to uh, school with uh, Jack Chan and Sam Hung. They were in a group called the Seven Little Fortunes when they were kids. They were like, you know, basically, you know... They were sort of the stars of their right. uh, Peking Opera School. 
And he, uh, there's actually a picture in uh, Jackie Chan's autobiography. It's, I guess, from like early, the early 70s. It's Jackie and Corey. And they're like, you know, they look, it looks like a picture you would get from Sears when you were a kid. Yeah. Like they're both wearing matching shirts. Like Jackie's got his hand on Corey's shoulder. And he's like standing above him. And, and Jackie's like, I have no idea why this picture exists. <laughs> what, what is this from? <laughs> and so he's like, he hadn't directed a movie since like 2006. But he, you know, he directed the first two Transporter movies. I mean, he's, you know, Corey's had a huge career. Yeah. And if you, like I said, this is his first movie to be this polished. I'd say he's a supremely talented guy. Yeah. He directed a lot of Jet, Jet Li's movies, you know. Yeah, cannot recommend this movie highly enough. Ninja and the Dragon's Den. Yep. Yep. Go get it. That's it. Prime. On Prime. If you have a Prime subscription, it will cost you no extra. Thank you for the uh, extended trailer of uh, Once Upon a Time in uh, Hollywood. It looks so good. Oh, my God. Did you get... So, at cons, it aired at cons and got a six-minute standing ovation. Yeah. When it was done. Everybody in the theater got up and clapped. Right. For six minutes. Yeah. How good does that movie have to be for that to happen? Probably pretty good. I'm worried about it. You think so? I'm not. I'm I'm not. not Have you seen the new trailer? That shot, the movie within the movie, where basically it's like a movie that DiCaprio's character's in, and basically he's playing like old school Nick Fury. Yeah. Like, the, <laughs> there's a group of Nazis around this table in this, like, Doctor Strange war room, and there's a balcony up top, and he runs in with a flamethrower, like, die, you Nazi bastards, and just sits everyone on fire. Then it just cuts to him, just like, scr- just, like laugh screaming. And it just looks like, I want to see that movie. Yeah. You know, because it just looks amazing. When does this... Come out August? No, July. July. Okay. July. July. Yeah, we should do a live one for that one. Absolutely. We should go down to Golden Ticket and we should do it. I, d- I mean, I I can't wait to see it. I just I'm trying to, you know, pump the brakes on it. I mean, but he's you know him making a movie about filmmaking. I know. I can't be more pumped. Yeah. J- and John Wick made fifty seven million dollars and, number one. and yeah. dethroned the Avengers yeah. like. Keanu Reeves and Haley Berry, John Wick number three. Yep. Is, and not only is it good, the yeah. critics are yeah. are raving that right. it's. And the first one wasn't that successful. When the, no, that's all word of mouth. After it I didn't out. even want to watch it. Yeah, I was like, this looks terrible. Yeah, I'm gonna hate it. Yeah, but I guess it's a new release, so I'm gonna give it a day in court. And I thought, man. That was really cool. Yeah. And then the second one, I was like, well, this can't be any good. Yeah. And I just watched it again yeah. a couple of days ago. It gets ago. better on a rewatch. And I was like, damn. Yeah. This is really good. He yeah, just killed great. like 136 people. Yeah. Because I, I went and looked it up. Because right. Because I, I had to know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm pumped for it, man. I mean, oh, yeah. how many, you know, trilogies like this. Right. You know, once it gets to the third movie, does anybody really want to see And it? also, how many rated R action movies are there for adults now? Yeah, not right. many. Not, not many. many. They, uh, that's why uh, dudes like us end up watching Ninja and the Dragons then. Yeah. Because everything, I mean, I, 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 need I, it. I like comic book movies. I like all that yeah. stuff. But yeah, sometimes I just need to see some, some carnage. I need to see some people doing some things. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I need to see a guy get uh, <laughs> caught on fire and then <laughs> jump into a swimming pool full of carrots. <laughs> And then thirty seconds later, he's standing like over there, like ah, I'm alive, bitch. Yeah, and he like, runs away. What? what? Yeah, like yeah. you know, he clearly should have died yeah. um, many God. times. Many times. Yeah. He catches on fire twice in the movie. Yeah. No burns. No burn. Yeah. And a mark on. Him. <laughs> he had some great hair. Yeah. Yeah. This whole movie's just full of people with great hair. Just. That's because they're pumping out kung fu movies every two months. Just yeah. go see Ninja and the Dragons then, I'm yep. telling you. And go see John Wick 3. I was going to go, but uh, Disney apparently muscled uh, some of the smaller theaters. Um, yeah. Golden Ticket was supposed to get John Wick, so River and I were going to go on Sunday. And I called Clam and I said, hey, man, can I get two tickets to John Wick? And he replied with no. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> he said, Disney told us that we had to run Avengers one more week or we would never get any more Disney movies. I don't know how that works, but basically they had to pull that's the That's how it's going to be yeah. from here on well, in. That's, uh, I, uh, y'all remember uh, like Ralph Bakshi's movies in the 70s, like the animated Lord of the Rings? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yes. He said that when Wizards came out, which is 77, it came out the same year as Star Wars, that they released Fantasia, re-released Fantasia, in every theater that Wizards played in just to screw it. Now, that could just be him being a bitter old man and just him exaggerating. But it wouldn't shock but me. But it wouldn't shock me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I like I don't think this is a new development. Right. 
you know. My mother, the guy who was the, who uh, was one of the, uh, teach, uh, like he, he, didn't, he wasn't a teacher at the school I went to, but he worked there, like if they needed something built, he would build. He was an Imagineer. And he said, dude, he's like, man, he's like, you know how many people get fired like a week before their retirement kicks in? He's like, it happens a lot. Yeah. You know. Crazy. Yeah. And you can't, what are you going to do? you yeah. got to have Disney movies or you'll go under. Yep. You're exactly. going to have that. They're all, the, 60% of movies are now Disney movies. That's what scares yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. They, Disney crazy. owns Die Hard now. Yeah, that's Ugh. crazy. Ugh. And terrible. And anyway, that's fine. But anyway, we've bitched about that enough. Or at least I have. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Well, you got us a movie? I do have a movie. Okay. I, I have, uh, it's all, It's also available on Prime. It also has ninjas in it. Yes. Woohoo! It's a, new, a newer movie, came out a few years ago. Ninja 2, Shadow of a Tear. Ninja 2, Electric Boogaloo. That's, yeah, we, more or less. Uh, it is, it stars, uh, it's from 2013, stars one of my favorite martial arts actors, Scott Atkins. Uh, he is basically, you know, he's a, he runs a ninjutsu school in Japan with his wife. His wife gets killed. He tracks down the guy, her killer, to Thailand, who was when uh, Japan occupied Thailand in World War II. After the end of the war, there were some uh, Japanese karate masters that stayed, one of whom was a, a ninja master, and basically trained local Thai people in, as ninjas. Right. And basically this guy, who is the villain is now this drug kingpin. And he uses uh, sort of this traditional Japanese chain whip, but his is made of barbed wire. So when, you know, he strangles someone with it, they have those little X barbed wire marks on the neck. So you can tell every time he's killed someone. Right. His name's Goro, and he is just vicious. And Scott Atkins is amazing in it. The fact that he's not a giant star is just ridiculous. And uh, it's it's basically just, you know, it's good ninja versus bad, versus bad drug dealer ninja. It's about 90 minutes. You know, it's good it's, stuff. It's exactly what you want. The fights are great. Okay. You know, I'm really, really wary of any kind of ninja movies. Yeah. From really the last twenty years. This one feels like is like it could have been made by Canon Pictures and they. Okay. It has that sort of you know. I mean, I'm sure there there are diamonds out there. Oh but yeah. Just all in all, I just I'm like. And Ninja One is okay. Yeah. Like the villains are this sort of Illuminati type cult. But Atkins is in that. Yeah, too, he's right? the he's the main character. It's it's a direct sequel, but you cannot see Ninja One and be just you know. I got you. Yeah, like in Ninja One, like the villains of this Illuminati cult, and they're completely separate from the action. So every twenty minutes they'll cut to these dudes in like in like robes. suits with like robes. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, these guys are in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But two is just straight up ninja on ninja. Nice action, and uh, yeah. So it's I, I highly recommend. It. Directed by Isaac Florentine, uh, Israeli filmmaker who's also a martial artist, and uh, yeah. Ninja Two: Shadow of a Tear. I forgot about one of my news things. What do you guys think about this Robert Patterson? It doesn't matter. Pattinson? Uh, uh, yeah. Ro- Pattinson? It Pattinson? It, it's all it, I don't know what his name is. That's how Who are we talking about? We're talking about the new Batman. Twilight? Twilight. Yeah. Twilight Boy. Yeah. yeah. I think he's going to be great. Honestly. Yeah. I, I really do. Oh, yeah. I, I think he's going to be great. Yeah. And also, it doesn't really matter. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, because imagine if somebody else said Tim Burton directed the 89 Batman. Because Michael Keaton was not in the pinnacle of human achievement shape. No, he just come off of gung ho. I exactly. Think. exactly. And, uh, he was not like today. I liked Ben Affleck. He was grizzled. He was. He was That's what I'm saying. Like, like Ben Burton, Tim, uh, like Tim, Al- Tim, Tim Allen, <laughs> Tim Burton had directed the '89 Batman. Complete shit show. Yeah, I think yeah. So. I mean, like maybe they got like who's another? Like, maybe like even like somebody like Richard Donner. It wouldn't have been as good, <laughs> you know. But it's just like it's all about. I mean, it's not. It's not. There will be blood, you know. No, the stunt guy's gonna do ninety percent of it in the suit. It's all, you know. I think he'll do a pretty good Bruce Wayne because it's gonna take place in the nineties. Like it's it's a young. It's basically a prequel to the ones we see. So when they do the like Justice like movie, yeah, they will put a little gray on his temples, and he's the new Batman. Yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, exactly. It's. I mean, he's a good enough actor. Like if you see the movie Good Times, yeah, he's, yeah. and the Rover. I, I really like yeah, the, the Rover. Rover. I was like, damn, okay, yeah. you're really doing it. Yeah, and also that was you know, what ten years ago those movies. I mean. Maybe not quite. Yeah, it's I'm, eight years, maybe. Right. And I'm waiting on the, the lighthouse. Oh yeah, for the guy to the witch. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Eggers. I know that. Uh, him and Defoe were were at cons like, talking it up pretty good. Yeah, so I'm hyped to see that black and white 35 millimeter shot. Like, right. Just everything I've read about the look of it is so creepy and about kind of, I, I guess like. Uh, 
what do you call it, ocean mythology, yeah. or, or like, it, it's not really pirate mythology, right. or just, you know, from that time, it just looks interesting as hell to me. Not really a mur- or, or not really a horror movie, but a horror movie, you right, know, right. at the same time. Uh, you know. So we'll see. Yeah. But Pattinson, I used to, he used to be the butt of a lot of jokes, but now he's, yeah. you know, he's kind of worked through it, and... Well, Kristen Stewart. I mean, she, you know, she was good too. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> terrible. <laughs> well, she's done a. She's hard to look at. <laughs> I hate her fucking face. Sorry about Fair that. Enough. Damn. All right, well, we'll end that conversation. Sorry. All right, so I, I'm going to say one more thing about Game of Thrones, and then we're going to drop it. Who did you want to have the Iron Throne? Who did you want? And when it was all said and done, who did you want sitting down in it? If there had to be somebody. Uh, Magna P.I. <laughs> Tom Selleck. <laughs> it's not hard. I do not watch the show. <laughs> I mean, really, I, that never, I never really cared about. I wanted to see somebody get there and be wowed or awed by how they were able to do it or pissed off at how they were able to do it. Some kind of an emotional reaction to somebody doing something, and instead, I got zero anything. It was like... Uh, you know, neutral. Like, if, at the end, did it really? Ma- does it matter? No, probably not. I mean, the way that that everything kind of ended, it, they could have put anybody on it, and I'd have been like, eh. Ray Liotta. <laughs> yep, yeah, Ray Liotta. He would have worked too. But well, just they hyped it up to where just by the end, it just didn't matter. And yeah, there wasn't a throne anymore. But who gives a fuck? Like, they still kind of named somebody the leader and whatever. Well, the showdown this week is going to end our Game of Thrones. Uh, our watch has ended on it. Um, what the poll is going to be simple. Do you think that the last season ruined the entire work of art? So it'll be a yes or no. There's no matchups. Oh, you fucking ain't right it did. Okay, so we'll see what everybody else says while it's still relevant, and then we will bury Game of Thrones. And Lee will be happy. Going to uh, the spot Saturday to do a fa- we're gonna try. We're going to attempt to do our first Facebook Live um, uh, podcast. It's not a part of the block. It's just going to be uh, random. Going to pick a movie off the shelf. We're all going to agree on whatever we're going to watch, and then we're going to watch it, and then we're going to do a show on it, and we'll just kind of uh, wing it. So it won't be our normal uh, block. It's going to. It's not going to be another. It won't be about kung fu. It's going to be kind of outside yeah. the box. Kind of a special promotion, uh, and uh, that's going to be Saturday. What is our next? Our next movie also oh, has block. Uh, Horiaki Yadada in it. It is Royal Warriors. From Royal 19- Warriors, nineteen eighty six, okay. starring. You know, one of, I love, so this movie I have seen. You've seen the yeah, I've seen the other two, uh, and uh, but it's of course he has. Of course, of course I have. Well, I I was like I, I texted yeah. you. Like, yeah. I was shocked that you had not seen... Yeah. Well, the DVD's been on my eBay watch list for like three years. I mean, I don't know how I yeah. never saw it. Because, man, I fucking loved it. I really did. Yeah. Ready to die! Yeah. Ready to kill! It was awesome. Oh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it with this. Um, a TV show that I've been watching mm-hmm. that... Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's been on for about two months. Mm-hmm. The What We Do in the Shadows, it's on FX, is fucking amazing. Yeah. I, and I can I can watch it and I'm like, nobody's. I just feel it in my bones, nobody's watching this. Yeah. And you are doing yourself a disservice. Right. I promise you, give this show a chance. It's on demand. Like, you can get it on your own demand. You can go back and watch these episodes. We're on, a, on demand, though. Go to you, FX. You have to get the FX app? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you okay. just go to FX or I'm sure you can download their app onto your whatever device, yeah, right. but I'm telling you, it is, it might be better than the movie. Yeah. Well, anything on Matt Berry and I There watch. is a character yeah. in this yeah. that I love so much, yeah. I, can't, I can't even stand it. Yeah. I, I need you guys to at least watch a couple of episodes right. so we can kind of chat it up. Okay. I'm telling you, I don't want to ruin anything, you will love well, it. Well, the shot from the trailer where... Uh, <laughs> Matt Mary's like, yeah. I got my fucking cape stuck in the car door. And, right. and his girlfriend's like, well, pull it out. And 
and a car just pulls away, and he's being drugged down the street. It's just such a pathetic. But I couldn't. Oh, I laughed at that so hard. You know, you forget that they're going to be extremely, like, they are saying fuck. They are. Oh, is they, that's what that was they do not pull thing. any punches in this. I'm telling you, yeah, it is adult made, and right. it is perfect. I promise yeah. you guys. Well, both of you guys, if I know anything about you guys, right. you will like. Well, that's this. FX's thing. Because I've heard them yes. say, like, the guy who runs it, he's like, listen, if you make it for this small amount of money, After I'll 11. give you some shitty yeah. commercials, and no one has to watch it. Yeah. They were like, because we have Sons of Anarchy and all this stuff that people love. Yeah. He's like, so we can make these other shows that nobody really cares about, but that we think are really good. Yeah, I mean, like, Jermaine uh, Clement, like, yeah. direct, he writes and, and directs at least half the episodes that I've seen. I think I've seen the first day episodes. Right. And uh, Waki, Tiki, Taki. Yep. What kind know, of, uh, yes. It directed a couple. Nice. Um, and, dude, it's... Yeah. My God. I, like, I, I, I regret watching them all. I binge-watched them. Yeah. Because I watched the first two, and I was like, oh, my God, this is so good. Yeah. I couldn't stop, and now right. I'm out. I've yeah. got to wait till it comes back on new. But right. To anybody out there who hasn't seen it. I can't wait to check it out. Please, please, Because I've seen the movie, this. I know not how many times. Because I, I want people to, I don't want this to go away. Yeah. It's that good, dude. I'm telling you. It's yeah. that good. It's This is original television that... That needs to be supported. Right. And I hope you guys support it. I'll check it out. Yeah, for sure we will. All right, well, that's it for uh, number one, Kung Fu 80s block. We'll see you guys at the spot on Saturday or on Facebook, actually. Don't come out there because you'll just distract us. Come out there. Uh, Well, you can come out there. Buy some some DVDs. They've got plenty. I know I am. They've got three for five bucks, which is a pretty good deal, actually. Yeah, that is a good deal. I mean, if you're, you know, you're going to get... You know, like I, I bought Man of Tai Chi and uh, The Crucible right. and Donnie Brasco. I had Donnie Brasco, somebody stole it, so now I got it back. So, you know, for those one times where I'm like, hey, yeah. I want to watch Donnie Brasco. Exactly. So there you and go. also, if you buy a physical copy and they take it off streaming, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You can just watch it then. That's You've right. got it forever. You have it forever. That's right. Or until some scumbag steals it. Yeah. All right, well, that's it. Yeah. Till uh, till Saturday. See you later. Keep watching the movies. There you go. You can do battle with strength. You can do battle with wits. But no weapon can beat a great pair of tits. Thank you for listening to the Tales for the Video Store podcast. Be sure to rate us on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And give us a recommendation on Facebook. Thanks for listening.